the road has turned to shit. It's absolute mud and it's slick as hell. Saddle up. Beyond the stars, out where the sun sets, we'll find the light and we'll keep it our secret. Oh, anywhere you wanna go. Hi, guys, and welcome to season two of Go Roughly Around the World. In season one, we started the trip in Guatemala, which is where we've been living for the past six years. And we made our way north, all the way up to the Arctic Ocean. It took us 22,000 kilometers to get there. Over 148 days of riding. Yeah. And so now we're on our way south. So we're doing tip to tip, top to bottom. Our goal is to get to Antarctica. So you know how like the excitement is always about getting somewhere, right? Like getting up to the Arctic Ocean. And that's, we were like in store for like a hellacious ride up north to the Arctic Ocean. And sort of at each step of the way, it had its challenges, it had its moments, and yet it wasn't quite the beast that we expected. Yeah. I mean, you had a lot of off-road challenge to overcome and fear to overcome, and yet it never showed its like ugly side. No, it actually was a lot easier, may I say, than I expected. And that's saying a lot, especially after all of the people who told us how difficult that road was going to be. And I'm not saying it was like easy peasy. It but, was not easy. But I'm saying that with the practice that I did and the training that I took, it really helped to get me up there. And so now we had made it. So sometimes it is the way back down <laughs> that it actually shows you its fangs and its claws. Yep. And that is definitely what was in store for us. What a special morning to wake up at the Arctic Ocean. There was the nice cool breeze coming off of the ocean and it just really sort of solidified about what an amazing accomplishment Moxie and I actually have done. And like, yes, I'm gonna toot my own horn a little bit because it has been like months and like almost a year in the making. And even 10 years ago when we did our first trip, we didn't make it all the way to the Arctic Ocean. This is a sod house. It is made of sod. There's no plaque, there's no information. It's just an old house from the area, but it's um, not a sad sod. So I had one screw that was bothering from all of the shaking. Um, and that was the one that puts, keeps my headlamp in place. So I need to, I needed to take off some of the screws for the windscreen and then lock tight this one long screw this fucking loctite is not is like loctiting itself in the threads so today we have another big adventure that we're gonna do because the sun doesn't really set until like 1 32 o'clock in the morning and then it and then it's only like a couple of hours of darkness we are going to try and do one of these monster long riding days and see what, how far we can get uh, on the way back down on the Dempster. When else can you ride this many hours in a day when you have that much light? We had to stop for some cloudberry picking. And what we've identified are two competing hunter-gatherer techniques at work. One technique is the eat as you pick approach. Instant gratification. The other approach is the squirrel it away and chipmunk it into your cheeks approach, which is what I've done here. Back in Inuvik, here we are. We pot, we pot, we pot, pot. We just 
just got a lovely little donation to the Girl Up fundraiser from this nice lady who now actually is in her truck right here, <laughs> Lena. She's a local woman here from Inuvik. We're trying to do the rest of the stretch of the Dempster in one shot today in the in 24 hours. Chances we are three are we're... hours away. It's eight o'clock here. Yeah. We gain an hour yeah. because we cross into in, the back Yukon. into Yukon. And I don't think that will make and it. And it's based a on holiday. The... It's yeah. a national holiday, which means... So who knows if they're even open. There's only that one gas station in Eagle Plains. No stopping, no slowing down based on what their speed limit is saying. We were able to fill up both of our, our tanks and... Drag... Top them up. And he topped off the two uh, Giant Loop Armadillo gas bags that have two Top gallons each. Them up. And so that should give us 24 liters each bike. From here to the gas station at the beginning of the Dempster is 550 kilometers. We get an efficiency of about 23, 24 kilometers per liter at this higher speed that we've been doing. It's about 80 kilometers an hour. So that should get us right at the mark. Like 24 liters is basically what we would need. So- And 24 is what we have. So it's gonna be tight. We are crossing the Fort McPherson Ferry and then it is like a haul. So this is going to be like a down to the wire, down to the last drop of gasoline, no bullshit riding and some hopes and prayers. It's a Mad Max style like blowout through the Badlands, empty, dusty, wilderness and Basically, I've got gas bags hanging off of both sides. We got tanks topped up and gas the currency right now. We are totally off of our uh, potentially making Eagle Plains at 10 o'clock. <laughs> way off of it but for the very best of reasons so we knew that there was this music festival that was happening in just outside of fort mcpherson and it was supposed to be this weekend as we were coming we passed the place and i was like let's go in and check it out so we went in unfortunately the festival had just ended but there were these women waving greg down uh, to come over and so we went over greg spoke with them while i was with moxie and i had a bunch of kids around me they're, they're special jeans that have Kevlar inside. And they invited us to stay for dinner. You ever ran into a bear? A bear? Yes, on the side of the road. They were all from Inuvit. Yep. Can I cut this goggles or no? Yeah, she'll be fine. Yeah, they're just plastic. They have UV. They're like sunglasses for her. I guess an extended family and just wonderful people and and got to sort of ask a bunch of questions about sort of how, how the locals do their thing and, and what it's like living here, especially in the winter. To support the Go Roughly Around the World adventure, visit GoRoughly.com to purchase outdoor gear for you and your dog. It's ethically made, looks amazing, and holds up to all the abuse that Moxie gives it during our adventures. Use coupon code GoRoughly20 for 20% off your purchase. Thanks so much, and now back to the adventure. Now, we are delayed for another reason, and that is because Moxie has fed and she is just refusing to poop. But you know Moxie's pooped when she's like digging her own grave so that she can die in it. We'll put the uh, rain fly over her to give her some extra warmth. You can see we're all wearing our winter stuff right now. We so, are fully winterized. Yeah, and we're about to get more into this, more of this gravel as we get towards the Yukon border. This is James Creek. This creek is fed by glacier runoff. It's a pullover 
and drink from it because it is pure fresh water from the glacier. I was really looking forward to pushing hard and doing about 800 kilometers plus to get uh, all the way through the Dempster Highway in one go. What I was going to call a gravel tail, but it is failure. We hit some serious wind out there. It opens up into planes and the winds just whip across those planes. And so at about 12.15 in the morning, or I guess mm -hmm. at night, 12. Whatever. I have brought one thing back from our visit to Tuck, and that is dried wood. According to my book, the Inuits and the Eskimos made kayaks out of the dried wood, and that's what they would go and hunt the whales uh, in. And so I brought one back from there because I really liked it as a fetch stick. One chomp and Moxie has destroyed my dried wood stick. So glad I got a sticker because that is definitely not a souvenir that's coming home with us. Last night started to rain. This morning started to rain and of course we camped here in this quarry which means on dirt which turns into mud when it's raining. We're gonna have a cold wet way back down to Dawson City. We're on our way down from Eagle Plains. We met somebody who just came up obviously said it was very muddy because of the rain. I did that thing where I said Oh no, it's going to be worse going down than it was going up because we heard one person say a thing. Greg had to remind me that we have already gone through this. We did the worst stretch. We know what this is like. So I have a feeling we'll do okay on the way down. It's not going to be like the most pleasant ride ever, but we will make it down and uh, have a nice warm place uh, at the end of the night. My gospel screams of justice, my words stuck on the ground, to plant my seeds right in the evil ground I found. So I stand fast and ready, when the wolf knocks at the door, when neither fear nor anger, nor will be restored. The road has turned to shit. It's absolute mud and it's slick as hell. I got into a patch up there, it almost went down. I was able to like barely correct it. And then I was like, Greg, we need to stop, I need a break. And then of course I pull off on the side where the mud is like so deep. And uh, Greg had to help like uh, steer me out of it so that we could just stop like basically in the middle of the road because that's the only spot that is somehow solid. So we're gonna try and pitter patter our way through this. Hopefully it'll get better because it's uh, dangerous conditions to be riding in this. Some keep your nose clean, but I can't help but smell the stench of all those evil rising up from hell. Hi guys, I hope you really enjoyed this episode. Please head on over to our Patreon where we share behind the scenes of each episode and travel tips and live updates from the road. You can donate what you can to get access so that you can dive deeper into the adventure with us. The link is in the description below. 
In this week's Behind the Scenes, we're going to be talking about what it was like to camp at the Arctic Ocean, like right there on the Arctic Ocean. So you're going to want to watch it. Don't forget to subscribe to us here on YouTube and at GoRoughly for Facebook and Instagram. We'll talk to you soon.